I'm going to show you how to make the large Mrs Claus applique from Creative Kiwi. For this I'm going to be using a 5x7 hoop, two layers of wash waste stabiliser per hooping, a selection of threads, some masking tape, my squizzers, some pins and my fabrics and batting cut to size. I'm not making this reversible so on the back of each hooping I'm going to be putting a layer of cutaway stabiliser rather than fabric. You'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other information as well so please do take the time to have a look. We're going to start off by hooping our two layers of wash away stabiliser. So place them over the outer hoop, insert the inside frame and then we're going to pin around the top edge of our hoop to stop it, the stabiliser from being pulled down between the two pieces. So take your pin, rest it on, on the inside uh, frame, push it through your stabiliser, bring it back round and back through the stabiliser again. And that will anchor it. And you're going to pin all sides and the larger your hoop, the more pins you will use. You're going to load file one into your machine, which is uh, Mrs. Claus's shoes or slippers and the holly, along with your thread color for her shoes. Now, if you're doing a reversible uh, Mrs. Claus, you're, everything that you do on the front of the hoop, you're going to do exactly the same on the back. So whatever fabric you put on the front, you'll put on the back, and whatever thread you use on the front, you will use a matching bobbin as well. I'm not doing the reversible, I'm just doing um, the front in this video, but um, you have a choice. So I've loaded my thread colour into my machine and my file and we're now going to stitch round number one and that's going to give us our placement outline for the shoes. As I'm not adding any fabrics to the back of my hoop, I'm going to turn my hoop over and place my cutaway stabiliser over the outline and tape it in place. Then I'm going to place my batting on the front and tape that in place as well. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure it all in place. now going to trim up the batting but because I've put a cutaway on the back I'm going to trim that up at the same time and take care of course not to cut any of your stitches I'm now going to trim up on the front You're going to place your fabric for her shoes over the outline and tape it in place. And if you're doing reversible, then you would tape your fabric onto the back as well and you'd be using a matching bobbin and thread to do your stitching. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure your fabric or fabrics to the hoop. We're now going to trim up around where the um, fabric for her feet are going to go. Place your fabric for her skin into your machine and tape it in place.
pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. You can use a flesh colour thread if you want to for this part but I'm not going to worry because the satin stitch is going to go around the edge and at the top here it's going to be hidden once we join so I'm happy to leave my black thread in. You're now going to trim up all your fabric from both back and front of the hoop if you're doing double sided and just on the front if you're not. We're now going to stitch round number five and that's going to do the satin stitch border around the shoe and around her foot. So make sure that you've got your thread colour for that loaded into your machine and matching bobbin if you're doing reversible. And then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five. If you're going to be stitching the sprig of holly and uh, putting it onto her hair later on you're now going to load your green thread into your machine for the leaves and then you're going to stitch round number six and that's going to give you a placement outline. If you're not going to be stitching the holly then you can remove your hoop from your machine now. I am going to be stitching it so we're now going to stitch round number six. Next is your batting, but if you're not making uh, a reversible version of this, like me, then I'm now going to add my uh, cutaway stabiliser on the back of my hoop. And you can do the same, or you can leave it bare if you're going to be adding it to something else. When you've done that, you're going to place your batting down on the front and tape it in place. And pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven and that's going to secure them. I'm going to turn my hoop over and trim away the excess uh, cutaway stabiliser from around the back. We're now going to trim up the batting. Place your fabric for the leaves over the outline and tape it in place. And of course, if you're making it reversible, then you would do exactly the same on the back first. Then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight, and that's going to secure your fabrics. We're now going to trim up around here where the holly berries are going to go. So trim away, taking care, of course, not to cut your stitches. And if you're doing reversible, do the same on the back. Then you're going to place your fabric for the berries over the outline. Oops. And tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine. And that's going to secure it. You're now going to trim up your excess fabrics, both back and front of the hoop if you've made it reversible.
you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch around number 10 and that's going to zigzag around the raw edges we're now going to stitch around number 11 and that's the satin stitching around the leaves so make sure you've got an appropriate thread and matching bobbin if you're doing reversible loaded into your machine first We're now going to do the satin stitching around the berries so make sure that you've got your thread or threads loaded into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number 12. Now that that's all stitched we can free this from the hoop so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge taking care of course not to cut your stitches. We're now going to trim up along the raw edges close to the stitch line so that when we come to join them to the other hoopings that uh, they will fit nice and neatly. And that's our first hooping complete. We can now put these aside for the minute. We now come to the second hooping, so load file 2 into your machine along with your thread colour for the, her pinny as well. Then you're going to hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser as you did before for the first hooping. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number 1 and that's going to give you a placement outline for the batting. As before I'm going to turn my hoop over and place my cutaway stabiliser over the outline and tape it in place. You're now going to place your fabric over the placement outline and tape that in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. turn my hoop over and trim away the excess cutaway stabiliser We're now going to start adding our fabrics and we're going to start off with her apron. So I'm going to be adding a pocket because I think that'll look really cute and I'm going to show you how I go about it. In the instructions it says do not uh, place your pocket higher than the centre of the thumbs which is going to be about here. I'm going to bring mine up to here. So I'm going to place a straight um, ruler or you can use a ruler or anything I'm just using my straight edge on my pokey thing and I'm going to draw a line and it's just so that I can see uh, once I've put my first fabric down where I'm going to be placing my second for the pocket so place your fabric um, for the apron I think I can get away with it around this way actually which will make life easier over the outline and then take it in place and then you're going to place your pocket fabric which is doubled over I've just got a scrap and I've doubled it over I've pressed it there's the the crease edge and you're going to place that in line with your uh, markings so I'm going to place that there and 
this over the top and now I can take that in place as well you want to make sure that you've got your thread color for the the apron loaded into your machine for this and if you're doing the same on the back then you need to add your fabrics on the back as well before you do the front then we're going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure our fabrics I forgot to take my uh, fabric down and it's catching under my machine so I'm going to back up 10 or so stitches I'm going to cut my thread and then I'm going to place a piece of tape over here and maybe a little bit closer this side as well just to make sure that it doesn't catch again and I can now resume stitching okay we're now going to trim up the excess fabric from around here where the skirt's going to be placed so I'm going to take my tape off I'm going to leave that down for a minute We're now going to add the fabric for the skirt so place it over the outline and then tape it in place I've loaded a more neutral thread into my machine because we're going to be adding one fabric after the next and I'm going to be using the same color throughout so I haven't used white um, because you wouldn't be able to see it but I've used a more uh, light beige colour so hopefully you will be able to see it with that so we're now going to pop our hoop into our machine and stitch round number four and that's going to secure our fabric or fabrics if you're doing reversible don't forget to add your backing fabric to the hoop So we're now going to trim the fabric up from around here and you're going to do this back and front of hoop if you're doing reversible place your fabric for her hands over the outline do this back and front if you're doing reversible and then tape it in place pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure them we're now going to trim away the excess fabric from around the bottom of her skirt and some of this as well you're going to place your fabric for the trim of her skirt over this outline and I'm using a faux fur it's called pony it's a really short pile so make sure that you have that round the right way and if you've got a long pile then you might want to place some solvy topper over the top so that your foot doesn't get caught in the um, fabric itself so I'm now going to take that in place and you're, if you're doing reversible make sure you do the same on the back however I wouldn't recommend using a thick fur both front and back because it's going to make it very very bulky and um, it, you, you could cause problems for yourself once you've done that you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to secure your fabric or fabrics to the hoop
going to trim up all your fabrics or should I say excess fabrics from the front and back of your hoop I've got my neutral thread loaded into my machine still because we're now going to stitch round number seven and that's going to zigzag all the raw edges and it will stop when we come to add the first foot and I've just noticed I've got a little bit more trimming up here to do so I will do that first before I load my hoop into my machine. So we're now going to add the feet and make sure that you get them around the right way. You're going to place the first foot with this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here where the zigzagging stops. And I'm going to add a pin. I'm going to put the pin through my fabric rather than my vinyl because holes in vinyl always shows up but I'm going to keep the pin right out of the way of that stitch line there. That's good enough. And I'm also going to add a little piece of tape each side to hold the corners down and it will also stop it from twisting as the hoop moves. In actual fact, I'll put that one down afterwards because it's going to um, affect the other one as well. So now you're going to add your second uh, foot and you want this stitch line here on top of this one again and you're going to line this corner here where the um, zigzagging stops here. And once more I'm going to add a pin just to hold it and keep it right out of the way of the stitch line. I can't say that enough. And now I'm going to add a little bit of tape just to keep them from twisting. So you're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag along this line and join both to the hoop. We're now going to load our thread colour for the quilting on her skirt into our, our machines. And if you're making yours reversible, you'll want to add a matching bobbin as well. And then you're going to stitch round number nine. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching on each side of her skirt into your machine along with matching bobbin of course if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number 10 load your thread colour for the satin stitching around the bottom of their apron into your machine and a matching bobbin and th thread if you're doing reversible of course and then you're going to stitch round number 11 Load your thread colour for the satin stitching of the hands into your machine along with the matching bobbin if you're making it reversible and then you're going to stitch round number 12. Load your thread colour for the satin stitching around the trim of her skirt into your machine and a matching bobbin as well if you're doing reversible of course and then you're going to stitch round number 13. And that's all the stitching done now for this hooping. A question that I get asked quite a lot is 
Why does my fabric show through my stitch line? And what can I do about it? It's basically the physics of uh, uh, fabrics, I'm afraid. And also, um, if you've got high contrast against each other, such as white against green or white against red, or black, whatever, um, it can happen. But there is something that you can do to um, make it less obvious. Because I've stitched this in a green colour rather than white, I can take um, a permanent marker, this is a Sharpie pen, and I can just touch it up and I'm just using a, a colour that's slightly lighter than my thread colour. Um, and I'm just going to touch it up round the edge. And then by the time it dries you won't even notice any of the the marker on there. Just be careful that it doesn't bleed onto your lighter fabric. That's the only thing that you do have to be careful of. And I just touch it rather than uh, I don't scrub as you would if you were colouring in. Just gentle touch, 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 touch. You have more control over it that way. So now that that's done, I'm going to free this from the hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the edge, taking care, of course, not to cut your stitches. And that's our second hoop in complete. I'm going to leave this on here for a minute, this little bit of tape. It's not going to do any harm. We now have to trim up along the edge of this stitch line here to tidy it up ready for joining in the next hooping. So trim close to the stitch line with a nice sharp pair of scissors without cutting the stitches themselves. And that's our second hooping complete and we can set it aside for the minute. So we now come to our third hooping. As before, you're going to hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser. Load file 3 into your machine along with your neutral thread. And then you're going to stitch round number 1 and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. I'm now going to turn my hoop over and as before place my cutaway stabiliser over the outline and tape it in place. Place your batting over the front and tape that in place as well. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it. I'm going to turn my hip over and trim away the excess cutaway stabiliser. And now the same on the front. Place your fabric for the collar over the outline and on the back as well if you're doing double sided and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric where it's going to meet with the dress fabric.
place your dress fabric over the outline and tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number four to secure it. Trim away the fabric from around the cuffs. Place your fabric for the cuffs over the outline and take it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five to secure them. Trim away all the excess fabric from around the stitch lines both back and front of your hoop if you're doing reversible. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number six and that's going to zigzag all the raw edges so I would advise you to use a, a neutral colour for that. So we're now going to join our previous segment onto this one. I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. You're going to line up this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here between where the zigzagging starts and finishes. You may have to tug on it a little bit to get it to line up. That's perfectly normal. It's because when you remove anything from the hoop it relaxes. So. Don't be afraid to give it a little tug. Not so violently that you remove it from the hoop though. <laughs> okay, so take a pin and pin it in place. Keeping your um, pins out of the way of the stitch line, of course. And I'm going to put a little bit of tape here and there just to keep it down. You're then going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number seven. And that's going to zigzag along this join here and join the two pieces together. Load your thread colour for the quilting of the top of her dress in your machine and a matching bobbin of course if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number eight load your thread colour for the satin stitching around her dress into your machine and a matching bobbin of course if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number nine your thread colour for the top of her apron into your machine and a matching bobbin if you're doing reversible of course and then you're going to stitch round number 10 load your thread colour for her cuffs into your machine and a matching bobbin as well if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number 11 and that's going to do the satin stitching around the borders. Load your thread colour for the buttons in the middle of her dress into your machine, including a matching bobbin if you're doing reversible. And then you're going to stitch round number 12. Load your thread colour for the satin stitch around her collar 
into your machine and a matching bobbin as well of course if you're doing reversible and then stitch round number 13 we're now going to remove this from the hoop so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge We're now going to trim up around the collar because that's where our next join is going to be. And again, close to the stitch line, taking care not to cut your stitches. And that's our third hoop incomplete. And we can now set this aside. So we're now on the fourth hooping. So as before, hoop and pin your two layers of wash away stabiliser. Load file four into your machine along with your neutral flesh coloured thread. And then you're going to stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. I'm now going to turn this over and place my cutaway stabiliser over the back outline and tape it in place I'm now going to place my batting over the front and tape that in place as well then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure it now going to trim away the cutaway stabiliser on the back and now the same on the front with the batting Place your fabric for her face over the top of the batting and tape it in place and do exactly the same on the back if you're making it reversible and pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three and that's going to secure it Load your thread colour for her nose and mouth into your machine and matching bobbin of course if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number four. Load your white thread into your machine along with your matching bobbin if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number five and that's going to stitch the white of the eyes. load your black thread into your machine and matching bobbin of course if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number six and that's going to do the black of the eyes and the eyelash detail load your thread color for the glasses into your machine along with the matching bobbin if you're doing reversible and then you're going to stitch round number seven We're now going to trim up the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line taking care of course not to cut your stitching and if you've done reversible make sure that you trim on the back first so that it doesn't get forgotten making sure that you've got your flesh colour thread loaded into your machine along with matching bobbin if you're doing reversible you're now going to stitch round number eight and that's going to zigzag the raw edges and it's going to leave an area where we're going to join the body to the head we 
We're now going to place the body to join it to the head and you're going to sit this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here between uh, the start and stop of the zigzag stitching. So I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. And then we're going to pin it in place. As always, keep your pins right out of the way of the stitch line. And I'm just going to place a little bit of tape each side to hold the corner down. You're now going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number nine and that's going to zigzag and join the two pieces together. Making sure that you've got your flesh colour thread and matching bobbin of course if you're doing reversible loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number 10 and that's going to do the satin stitching and of her ears and around her face. So that's the head stitched. We can now free this from the uh, hoop. So turn your hoop over and trim around the outside of your stitches, taking care of course not to cut them. So that's our head complete and we can now set this aside for the minute. We now come to the fifth hooping. So hoop and pin your two layers of wash waste stabiliser. Load file 5 into your machine and that's part of our hair. So you want um, a thread colour for that as well, including a bobbin if you're making her reversible and then you'll go to stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting. As I've done in all the other hoopings I'm now going to turn my hoop over, place my cutaway stabiliser over the outline on the back of my hoop and tape it in place. I'm now going to add my batting on the front and tape that in place as well. Then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two and that's going to secure them in place. I'm going to turn my hoop over and trim away the excess stabiliser from the back. Now I'm going to do the same with the stabiliser on the front. Place your fabric over the batting and if you're doing reversible then you add your fabric on the back first and then tape it in place. Pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure it. Trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line, both back and front of your hoop if you're doing reversible. Making sure that you've got your matching bobbin and thread if you're doing reversible loaded into your machine. You're now going to stitch round number four and that's going to zigzag around the edge here. We're now going to join half of her head to the hair but before we do I forgot to trim up along this edge earlier so I'm going to do that first. So 
so you're going to align where this stops, the zigzagging stops with the edge of her ear and the rest should just all sit nicely in place and you're going to put this stitch line here on top of this stitch line here as we have done throughout and I'm going to pin this in place keeping your pins right out of the way of the stitch line so I'm going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing I'm going to tape down the edges here and here and to hold down this little point that's just going to flip up if I'm not careful I've got a piece of sellotape just ordinary clear sellotape and I'm going to place that over the top and once your machine stitches through it afterwards you'll just be able to tear it off because it will all be perforated and we can remove it so once you're happy that you've got everything aligned properly and secured you're then going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag along this part of the stitch line I've just removed the sellotape from her hairline making sure that you got an appropriate colour for her hair loaded into your machine and with a matching bobbin of course if you're doing reversible you're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to do the satin stitching so that's our hooping complete we can now remove this from the hoop so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches of course so we now come to the sixth and final hooping so load your two layers of wash away stabilizer into your hoop and pin it load file six into your machine you should already have your hair thread loaded in already so you shouldn't have to do much there then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number one and that's going to give you a placement outline for your batting I've loaded a red thread into my machine so that you can see what I'm doing I will swap it out in a little while I'm going to add my cutaway stabiliser on the back of my hoop so I've placed it over the outline and I'm going to tape it in place I'm now going to place the batting on the front and tape that in place as well then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number two to secure them I'm going to turn my hoop over and trim away the excess uh, cutaway stabiliser from around the edge of the stitch line and then I'm going to trim away the excess batting as well you're now going to place your fabrics over the top of the batting so if you're making yours reversible start on the back place it over the outline and tape it down and then on the front over the top of the batting and tape it down then you're going to pop your hoop into your machine and stitch round number three to secure them trim away the excess fabric from around the edge of the stitch line back and front if you're doing reversible you're now going to pop your hoop back into your machine and stitch round number four and that's going to zigzag around here 
and it will stop where we're going to join the uh, other side of the hair and face onto this hoop. So we're now going to join our previous pieces to here. The um, zigzagging stops here and here so we want to make sure that we align everything up between those two points and you want this stitch line here to sit on top of this stitch line here as always and then I'm going to pin mine make sure that if you use pins that you keep them right out of the way of the stitch line and I'm just going to tape the corners down when you're happy pop your hoop into your machine and then you're going to stitch round number five and that's going to zigzag and join the two pieces together we're now going to stitch round number six and that's going to complete the satin stitching around the hair that's all our stitching complete we can now free this from the hoop so turn your hoop over and trim around the edge taking care not to cut your stitches of course so that's my back and that's my front all that remains now is to dissolve all the excess stabilizer from around the edge so take a cotton bud and some warm water dip your cotton bud into the water and then just wipe it around the edge of the stitch line and that will remove all the excess stabilizer And if you're doing reversible, then you're going to go around the uh, edges where you trimmed as well and do exactly the same. So all that remains now is to attach the holly to Mrs. Claus's hair. And I'm going to stitch that on by hand and that's it finished so all that remains for us to do now is to stitch the holly to Mrs Claus's hair and I will stitch that by hand and there she is all finished I hope you enjoyed this stitch along if you did please give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos as soon as they're published and do share them as well do pop along to Creative Kiwis Facebook group there's always lots of ideas help and inspiration there for everybody and thank you very much for joining me and I want to take the opportunity to wish you a Merry Christmas as well You'll find a link to this design in the video description below along with lots of other useful information such as where I get my supplies and some discount codes for you as well.